Our next guest says that every believer is prophetic, and that means you too. He is a best-selling author, prophetic voice for the nations, and in his new book, The Prophet, James Gall teaches how we can create and sustain a life-giving prophetic culture. James, welcome back to real life. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good, good to see to, you. Good to have you here. Yep. So when we hear the word prophet, I think a lot of us think of Isaiah and Ezekiel, Jeremiah, or, or maybe we know a little bit about New Testament, but for, for a Christian, can yes. ever, I mean, who's a prophet? Can people, can, can our viewers out there, can that viewer say, wait a minute now, I'm not a prophet. How do I, how do I move in that? Who, who has the gift of prophecy? Yeah, so there's a difference. You actually asked two questions already, <laughs> okay? So who can have the gift of prophecy, but also the distinction of a New Testament prophet? Okay. So in one of the chapters in this book, The Prophet, I talk about four different levels in prophetic ministry. So there's the occasional gift of prophecy, yeah. a consistent operation, then there's the ministry of a prophecy, and then there's the office of a prophet, which is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And so the gift of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, is for edification, mm -hmm. exhortation, and comfort but it does not include correction or direction. Okay. But the office of a prophet is different. They, it includes that, but it's more governmental. Ephesians 2.20, the church is built on the foundation of Jesus and apostles and prophets. And so then prophets are equippers to help others, like pastors mm -hmm. are equippers to help others do what they're gifted in. Prophets are equippers who help others do what they are gifted in, which is primarily how to hear God's voice today. Well, let me ask you about those four levels of prophetic yeah. ministry, because as I read that, I, I saw the first level, and yeah. occasional inspirational prophecy. And I, I think of myself, because this is kind of where, uh, yeah. in many ways, yeah. I pray for people at our church, yes. and people come to the altar. That's right. Quite often, yes. I get a picture yeah. or something, That's right. and I'll share that with them. That's right. There's not a lot of interpretation that I'm doing with that, but mm -hmm. I'm saying this is something for yes. you. Um, so that kind of is, is, is that level. Could you just speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we give expression to the impression. And so sometimes those are little snapshot pictures, but now you were using a reference like in personal ministry to more of the visionary dimension. And so that would be like a seer realm, visions, okay. experiences of that nature. But then there is the bubbling up gift of prophecy that is going to like give a word of encouragement, a, a word perhaps of, uh, consolation or comfort. And so, yes, that is what you and many are operating in personal ministry, but you can also be a prophetic intercessor. And so it isn't as much ministering to people, you're taking your revelation, you're praying it back to God, you're praying through the prophecies of the Word of God that have not fully been met and fulfilled wow. yet, like Simeon and Anna, in right. Luke chapter 2, and Anna was called a prophetess, but it doesn't ever give one account of her actually personally prophesying. That is so interesting. I, I love the, the fact that I, I think it was Jeremiah who began praying when he saw the yes. 70 weeks. He began That's praying right. into that yes. uh, because he was like, hey, this is, this is what God wants to do, yes, and absolutely. I need to pray into that. And so the prophetic is also, was well, a lot of hearing the, the, yes. the voice of God, recognizing that. So if you are prophetically gifted, it isn't first all about what you say, it is what you receive. And so it is, you know, worship is one of the best cultures, creating a prophetic culture mm -hmm. is worship. And so it's like, I hear the Lord when I get in worship services, but I don't hear God only in worship services because there is the lifestyle. So if you want to increase in a lifestyle of revelation, that's the prophetic, by the way, then enter into worship. That's we great. enter into his gates with, what is Thanksgiving. it? Thanksgiving. And this is what <laughs> week? Uh, this is Thanksgiving Come week. on, so we can be <laughs> prophetic in yeah. our homes, in our families, and create a culture of the 
presence of God, enter into his gates of thanksgiving, to his courts of praise, and then you stand in the council of the Almighty, and God likes to share his secrets with his friends. That is, uh, again, that is so good. You know, let's talk about that um, speaking forth yeah. part. I remember, and I, I hate to always use myself as That's an example, okay. but it, it, hey, it, 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 it's, it reminded, it's, you, it's you and me right now. It reminded me of things like the first time I ever spoke out in a yes. word, I was in a men's Bible study, probably uh -huh. only seven or eight sure. guys there, maybe not even that many. And I remember I spoke out and I stopped halfway through oh, and yeah. I said, I said, brothers, I don't I, know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and guess what? You never really know what you're doing because we are to be in constant relational dependency upon God. God gives the gifts, but faith without corresponding actions is dead. And so it is the dynamic of God's gift with human us cooperation. Yeah. We have to yield. So it stopped, but did God stop? Probably not. There might have been a little more. Well, they encouraged me. Yeah. They, they, and I kept kind of saying what I thought God yeah. was saying. And yeah. it then came forth. Yeah. I, when I got baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, I started prophesying first. Wow. And I had no teaching as background. But that was a clue to the calling of God on my life. And so then I today have ministered in over 50 countries and written 40 some books mm -hmm. and and um, love to speak into direction and speak into cities and destinies. By the way, there's somebody out there right now with diverticulitis. It's an internal uh, digestive disorder and the Holy Spirit wants to heal you. I Amen. feel his presence uh, on you right now. And there's somebody out there, your name might be Anna. And the Holy Spirit wants to remind you, he has already heard your prayers and he is gonna to touch your family even in the holiday season. Wow, that is, that is fantastic. If you say, hey, that's me. Maybe you, did, you didn't expect this at all, yeah. you tuned in, and all of a sudden you're watching us on TV and then here comes this word straight from God. You know what, I would encourage you first to, to pray into that, but also yes. call our prayer partner and tell them. Uh, the number's there on your screen. Call them and say, I am that person. I am, I am believing God for what James just said. Uh, it, wow, <laughs> it's exciting. Now, I love that. Now, you said something early and you uh -huh. also said it in the yeah. book that it's not for judgment necessarily. When we read the Old Testament prophets, there's, it's easy to get a judgment mentality yeah. related to prophecy, but it's more encouraging people, it seems to be. Okay, New Testament, yeah. we are good news. <laughs> That's right. Believers, yeah. Jesus came to bring the good news. So. Old Testament, yes, but New Testament in the New Covenant, I want to challenge some of the people out there. We are good news prophets, <laughs> okay? Now, that doesn't mean that judgment is not also a part of an element, but let's not make the exception the rule, and criticism is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I like that. In <laughs> fact, you have a you have a little list here. Yeah. Um, purposes of the gift of prophecy. Sure. Now, again, we're we're talking about there's a differentiation between the office, yes. the gift, um, but edification, exhortation, comfort, con to convict and convince, instruction, impartation yeah. of gifts. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have had. You know, people lay hands on me. I remember when Kenneth Hagin uh, laid hands on me and believe me, faith? Yeah, I had a supercharge, whatever you want to call it, of an impartation and my faith was built up. And so all things are possible. So cause you brought that up, I just bless the watchers, the viewers right now. And Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, stir up the spiritual gifts that are within you. So I just say, let it bubble up and let it come forth and let an inspirational word of encouragement spring up in Jesus' name. Oh, that is so good. That, that is, uh, and if you're that person, I just would encourage also, just again, you're watching a TV program, but God is in this and God is in your room right now. He's wanting to bubble up through you. 
And uh, we're going to have more with James. I know I hardly can take a break, but we're going to have more with James in just a few minutes.